please welcome Stephanie Ann Johnson. Where is she? Welcome, Stephanie. Welcome to the show. Here's your mic for you. So, again, Stephanie, I heard you uh, doing your sound check and stuff. Incredible. You all are in a, for a huge treat. It's going to be so fun. I can't wait. Uh, so you performed on season five of The Voice. Is that correct? Yep. Could you? Yeah. Yeah. And you're a PLU grad, right? Yeah. Yeah, she graduated from... So, in season four, what was that like, being on The Voice? What was, could you just tell us a little bit about that? Like, like every other job I've ever gotten in music, I got hooked up with that job because a friend I knew, you know, elbowed me and was like, you know, these are people you should audition for, send them a tape. Um, it was a long process. It took a, a couple auditions to get to that first blind audition. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really, really wild. Uh, but it was exciting to see how many people, you know, from across this country um, had my same dream of, of playing music professionally. Yeah, that's super cool. Who, who, hit, uh, who, who picked you originally? Who was the original? The two chairs to turn were uh, CeeLo Green CeeLo. and uh, Christina Aguilera. Wow. Wow. So the two important people, right? The two people that really mattered, right? I mean, for me, like, talking to CeeLo Green was, it was weird because it was, he was so friendly. So it was like talking to somebody I already knew because he was disarming in that way. Um, and then, like, being around... Like Joe Biden, maybe? Like, like that kind something of... Something like this, something yeah. like this. John Kerry, something like this. Um, <laughs> Uh, and that was the year that he had like that like extraordinary artwork that was like faux tattooed on his head that oh, was wow. pretty amazing. Um, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of a, one of the things that you realize as you get older is like every piece of media you've ever seen was made by somebody with uh, everything you've got, you know, hands and feet and blood and bones, all that stuff. Um, so every every piece of art you've ever seen has been made by somebody no not a lot more different than you. So what is the difference between their art and your art? Well, they did theirs. Did you do yours? You know. Wow. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. Wise words. So you're a PLU alum. You studied English here, is that right? Yeah, that... yeah, English major. But I spent a lot of time in MBR. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. How did PLU uh, prepare you for your career that you had? And also, do you re regret the English degree at all, considering you aren't doing English? Is that, yeah? Well, a, a couple things. Number one, I failed piano proficiency, so I didn't get my music degree. Um, oh. Let's everybody be sad. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, piano is not, not particularly my instrument. Um, secondarily, um, the English language, communication, poetry, I mean, I'm a lyricist as well, so I deal with words quite a bit. Um, so I, I love it. Uh, do, do some reading, do some writing, please, please something. Um, but, but yeah, I, I feel like the friends that I made here uh, at PLU, together over the years, we've made incredible art. And so I really just encourage you, you know, make friends and then get in their business. Yeah, awesome. That's how you get things done, right? Yeah, you make friends, get in their business. Yeah. <laughs> So you were a cruise line singer for a while, and yes. most of what I know comes from the Sprouse twins on Sweet Life on Deck about okay, the okay. cruise life. Sucks. So what, what is it like being people oh, sputtering at that? <laughs> it was a good -ish show. It was OK. <laughs> uh, what was it like being a cruise line singer? Um, I really encourage, I mean, if you're a, a singer songwriter or, if, or a, a player of, of any kind, and a cruise ship is not a bad job to go and build your chops. Um, because I was playing guitar and singing for people, I mean, contractually up to five hours a day, every day. And then, you know, when I'm not on stage, you know, somebody requested this song by Three Dog Night and I have to go learn it, like right now, you know, because I have to present it tomorrow or the day after. It was wow. stuff like that. So I learned how to transpose quickly. I learned how to work a crowd. I learned how to talk to people. I learned to uh, get over myself a little bit so there's a little less stage fright when I perform. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a giant learning experience. And I got to see the world while I did it. Yeah, um, not a bad deal. Yeah, oh yeah. Do you still, do you still, still get stage fright when you, uh, when you perform? Or how was that like? You know, if I'm not a little afraid, it's because I wasn't excited. You know? 
Yeah. And so uh, I kind of choose to <laughs> cherish a little bit of my stage fright. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so well, cruises, there's a lot of things that come from cruises. Everybody has a story from that time they took a cruise. Oh, yeah. Do you have any stories or things that pop out at you from when you were working the cruises? One of my favorite stories was uh, when this like, group of French people got on the boat. Um, and one of the guys was standing around, you know, looking French. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how, how the French do, how they do. I mean, he was incredible. And, you know, Silver Fox. And <laughs> oh. uh, so he comes up to me and he says, uh, do you have a song from Uncle Williams? And I said, did you, did you say Aqualon? And he said, Uncle Unc Williams. And I took him in and then said, oh, oh, Hank Williams. Yes, I have Hank Williams. Let's do that. Oh, that's awesome. That was yeah. fun. <laughs> so the, the cultural, just the divide that created the situation there. Culture yeah. is a beautiful thing. Culture, uh, you know, like language, is all about fashion and style and what we do and what's popular. Um, so I really, I love culture. I love traveling for that, that same reason. That's, I've never heard culture put in those words before. That's super cool. That's yeah. Really oh, cool yeah. oh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so you, <laughs> you have actually put on your own community theater show in the area. You performed The Wiz at the Ashland Shakespeare Festival. Obviously, you're immensely talented. Uh, but what drew you to do those things specifically, the, the theater aspect versus music, which is intertwined, I get. But. Um, you know, you got to try new stuff. You got to do new stuff. You got to challenge yourself. You got to do all the stuff that scares you because there's usually a lot of lessons in there. Um, and being at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, these, these, people, these people work so hard every day, day and night. And it's not just the like 24 main stage shows that put on. They do so many community outreach events, including a, a giant like weekend long fundraiser for um, uh, AIDS research. Um, they're incredible artists, and it was an incredible blessing to be in Ashland learning to do theater at that level. Wow. Um, the reason that we put on the show that we did here in the area um, was to, because the Muslim ban had just gone down, mm -hmm. and, and this was, I think, last year sometime, um, in the early fall, I think it was November, and um, you know, I had a third grade teacher, this is why educators are important, I had a third grade teacher who was in the um, internment camps in the Puyallup Fair. And so in the third grade, she told us about this and brought photos and pictures, and this is my family, and this is my aunt, and this is the suitcase, and we read a story about it. And so I think kids are ready to hear those bigger stories as long as we tell them in context. Mm -hmm. And so it was really important for me to put on that piece of theater, which was uh, this wonderful woman named Aya Clark, local uh, a theater person, who uh, talked to a company in Seattle that gathers stories from people that were intermed uh, up and down the, the west coast here. And so she combed like thousands of stories and, and knit them together. I added some music and we were able to uh, sell out that production. Oh my God. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Oh yeah. Did you, so I'm, uh, I'm a communication theater double major. Yes. Did you do theater when you were at PLU? I did not do theater when I was here at PLU. Um, and this is something I think all of you need to bother the administration about. There is absolutely no reason that there should be as big a divide as there is between theater and music. We are all doing the same thing. We are all doing the same thing. We are all telling the story and we're doing it by different means, yes? All right. Secondarily, this is your school. They work for you, you pay them your money, so you need to get what you want. Yeah. <laughs> Red Square, after the show, Red Square. <laughs> so, uh, and one of the things that we do um, that is a little bit of a combination of the two departments is our Night of Musical Theater. Were you ever mm -hmm. a part of that? Yes, I was. Oh! <laughs> But I dropped out because I am just recently learning that it is much better to work well with others. So understandable. You can always learn to be a collaborative artist. That's the journey I'm on right now. And uh, you could redeem the fact that you dropped out. The show is next weekend, and I'm in the show, so you can come watch. 
Will you send me a Facebook message about this? I, I can do that. Okay, cool. I have to friend you on Facebook, though. Will you let I me do that? I will do that. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so she's going to be coming to Nam. So when we don't, we, we will all send you Facebook messages. Okay. <laughs> so you're from Tacoma. Uh, do you do any community outreach in the area? What are you involved with? Um, uh, locally, I work uh, with a group out of Seattle called the Rain City Rock Camp for Girls. And um, they're this wonderful, like, woman-run organization that um, works with girls and women. But the summer camps that they do, it's aged, I want to say, 6 to 19, something like this. And these young women and gender non-conforming individuals, snaps, please and thank you, um, they come the first day of camp. They uh, are sorted into a band. They get uh, a lecture on songwriting, on working together as a band, on body positivity. And then at the end of the week, they go to a real club um, as a group en masse, and each band plays a song they've written together over the week. Wow. Some kids play soccer, some kids play basketball, some kids do theater, and some kids just need to be in a band and turn the amp up. Yeah! And so... Um, wow. It's, it's, my, it's my pleasure to be kind of folded into this wonderful community of women. We can always use more women of color. So please join us, talk to us. Um, we have the Facebook links for you. Um, you know, get involved because the, the next generation needs your stories. Um, and, and the way that you can grow uh, if you share what you know with someone else, it's immeasurable. Wow. So, is there, do you have them like, compete in anything at the end, or does everybody just showcase their work? It's not really about competition. Mm -hmm. It's about building community, and it's about working together. Because all of our favorite rap groups come from cities that have communities that exist. And I think that uh, bands are like that. Like, bands are successful. Entertainers are successful because of the community that surrounds them. And so with this community, what we're trying to do is build a community that is open and accepting that will allow people who wouldn't otherwise be allowed to make a lot of noise and feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, give it up for her. So uh, what advice do you have for people about you know, like going out in the world. And so you, you became a professional musician, and now you are running things uh, for young girls, and uh, they're getting to perform music. What, do you, what advice do you have for people uh, as they go out and pursue their careers? How can they make a difference in, in their communities? You know, I really believe in, you know, some, some of the words of, I believe in the gospel according to rock and roll. That's what I think about it. And, and, <laughs> Nina Simone tells us that it is an artist's duty to reflect the times. So reflect your times. Um, make friends, go to events, go to museums, see art, um, read the artist's way, write in the mornings, be interested in yourself, love yourself, take care of yourself. When your friends have shows, go, pay the money and go, um, because a m music has to exist in a scene, right? Theater has to exist in a scene. Like, your presence as an audience member is important. Um, so always be aware also of the conversation between your audience and yourself. So a lot of things. Yeah. But make friends. That's super, that's super true, I right think. Oh, yeah. Uh, and in fact, like the way this show happens is uh, all of my friends helped me put this on, and that's kind of what it is. We got together and did it. So that speaks really true to what we do here at Late Night. Yeah. Um, so we have one last question for you. Uh, the, this is from Lexaflex, and she is wondering, who is your biggest inspiration? That is a really heavy question. Um, I really think that it... it I think that it comes from in my family. I mean, I guess it's kind of cliche, but it's my mom. Um, I was 25, and I was, I had, I did AmeriCorps right after PLU because I was going to be a teacher. I was going to be Nate, and um, <laughs> some friends of mine that I met while I was here at PLU um, were like, "We work on cruise ships. We got to get you this job. It's going to happen." Um, I had a phone call with an agent in San Diego. I had a contract three days later, and. My mom takes me to Olive Garden, and we're sitting there, and I'm like, you know, 
sh shouldn't I be giving back to the community? Like, shouldn't I be a teacher? Like, isn't it like wrong for me to do this like thing that's totally indulgent and be a musician? And she said to me, and I think about it all the time, she said, every time you sing, every time you open your mouth, that is a gift you give to people. And, you know, it, just, it breaks my heart to think about it that way, but I feel like that. Um, and I hope you feel like that when I sing later on. Awesome. Well, thank you. We'll get to hear you sing. Thank you so much, Stephanie. We'll be right back.